I have both the pleasure and fear-inducing job of going first. And having lived through my own, um, my own presentations previously, uh, I made notes. Uh, so I, I wanted to thank the Extension School um, and the Dean and Ian and everyone else uh, who put this together uh, to begin with. Uh, I went through the ALB program back in 2002. Uh, Afterwards, went back to my uh, ancestral hometown of Baltimore, Maryland, uh, where I uh, worked as a classroom teacher for eight years um, and uh, have been working uh, with the Johns Hopkins University School of Education uh, since around 2009. And uh, last April, uh, put together a, a, a software company to deal with uh, some interesting things that were happening uh, in the learning space around continuing education and around continuing education, uh, which uh, I think we'll talk about uh, currently. I really want to look um, sort of under the hood of the technologies that are available around learning itself. Um, continuing education in the era of social media, as it were, uh, we tend to sort of... Um, uh, limit or use shorthand around social media, what that means to us in terms of um, uh, connectivity uh, around uh, journalism, uh, around culture, around politics, around sort of communications. Uh, but really, uh, more importantly, and I think much more interestingly, is the idea that um, as the web itself has expressed itself into its third and fourth iteration, uh, social is actually the connection not just between human and human, but human and machine and increasingly machine and machine. And those connective tissue pieces uh, within the internet itself uh, are increasingly social in the way that humans and machines relate to one another. Um, in terms of what this means in educational and learning technologies, um, I, I see sort of three phases uh, that have happened in near history. Uh, phase one, I, I, I would describe as sort of digital imitating analog. So here we have a nice a uh, skeuomorphic design of a uh, calendar. Um, uh, the idea that um, digital grade books replace analog grade books, that digital attendance sheets replace analog attendance sheets, that even sort of wrought big through entire learning management systems, essentially recreating in digital space the kinds of experiences that happen in analog human physical space. Um, I would say that um, even talking about MOOCs, um, the sort of original MOOC concept, MOOC C, which was developed in Canada, was very much about connectivity and connectedness. The MOOC X that was developed in the States at Stanford and here at Harvard and MIT uh, is very much um, I I a different sort of thing. And, and I would argue that in many ways uh, what MOOCs currently represent is this, it, it is a digital version of the analog. It is taking lecture and the classroom experience into digital space, uh, but it, it's missing perhaps uh, a lot of what's available. Uh, phase two, I would say, gets into appropriation. Uh, this is what we often refer to as sort of like the grassroots, right, where users take it upon themselves to uh, recast technologies in different ways. So you have uh, educators and politicians and journalists, et cetera, all using Twitter or Google Plus in ways that uh, sort of extend uh, beyond what you know, a, a particular founder or a particular developer uh, might have envisioned originally. You don't know when you're developing something necessarily how uh, it's going to be used and specifically how it's going to be used among many subdomains. Um, and what I would say here um, is that uh, this appropriation um, carries over into learning and instruction itself, where we have sort of an illusion uh, that uh, what we're actually appropriating um, is uh, valuable in terms of going back to that, not just human to human and human to machine, but to machine to machine learning. And the reason for that is because um, you, you don't own yourself. On, on these networks. When you appropriate a technology, what you give up is the ownership of your own learning, 
your, your, your own self in these systems. And so we really move on to phase three, which goes beyond into actually creating new technologies built for the purpose of the kinds of pedagogical changes that have occurred in learning and instruction and teaching. Um, but there's a catch-22 here, um, and that is that um, learning and teaching has developed very much out of the need to appropriate existing technologies. The technology is actually built and supporting from the point of view of development of what has happened in the pedagogy space has yet to be actually fully realized. And what that means is that uh, we have, um, we have a, a, a place where the types of pedagogy available have actually outstripped the capabilities of technologies to support them. And the capabilities of technologies to support them are being built to analogs that existed before the teaching methods, which are now in place because of the appropriation. So our company in Baltimore uh, is actually um, working with uh, some recent uh, work that was open sourced out of the Department of Defense. Um, and um, this is sort of where we're going. Um, we think that by uh, creating the infrastructure of uh, what will be human to machine and machine to machine learning uh, based on massive models uh, being derived from uh, what better, continuing education and professional development, uh, we're actually able to capture the entire qualified experience of human learning on Earth. The reason why we're looking specifically at continuing education and professional development and professional learning is because you have a, the most enormous swath of ability to gather from multiple industries. Uh, so you're not just getting data points based on uh, sort of instructional values, like uh, A is the answer and A was answered correctly. Instead, what you're actually gathering is the complete m motivation and motivation in environment mindset across entire industries uh, by attacking it through the problem of professional learning. Uh, ultimately, uh, where this goes is into learning machines themselves, uh, which carry the capability um, to uh, use the, as I said, the sort of collected experience, and, I, and that, that's sort of the key word here. The collected experiences across global data sets that uh, result in sort of what we all need in terms of thinking about education, what we need to think about in terms of uh, the coming development of next-gen machine learning. Um, and I would say that these are the three things just to keep in mind. Um, one, all media is social. There is no such thing as social media. All media is social because everything that happens connected to digital environment is by its infrastructure completely social. Uh, secondly, uh, all social objects are learning objects. In other words, every piece of data, every data point that exists throughout the social technology architecture of the existing web is a developmental formative set of data correlations. And what that means is that we can start to create predictive models of success and failure, and we can start to teach machines to teach machines to do the same thing at levels considerably more complicated. Um, and lastly, learning objects themselves are foremost data. We tend, as students and teachers, university environment, to think of learning as what goes on sort of in the human formatively, and that's true. But when we're talking about learning objects themselves, where we take the formative learning as exists through a, a digital infrastructure, and we look at it as data points, all of a sudden um, uh, you, you have opportunity for innovation on mass scales uh, that uh, start to align with some of the predictions um, regarding uh, sort of the future of AI, robotics, intelligence, and cognition uh, through the internet over the next 30 years. That's what we're working on in Baltimore. And uh, happy to be here and talk about it with you. 
and I'm happy to answer any questions, either now uh, or uh, later on over coffee. So let me just say for people who want to ask questions, if you're able, there's a, a standing mic in the aisle there. If it's easier for you to use the handheld mic in your seat for any reason, just stick with your hand and one of us will get the mic to you. Yes, hello. Could you give, um, when you're talking about how you, you quantified, um, when you quantified, do you, you have the experience, you talk about the, the motivation, the experience to, to innovation. I'm just curious, could you tell me one or two conversations that were had to decide how you were going to evaluate and quantify this sort of experience? Currently, we're at the stage of collecting it because the actual collection of human experience as opposed to collection of summative assessment is very new terrain. So first, you have to develop an infrastructure that can actually uh, collect not just, think of a driver's test, not just the ability to uh, pass the computer section of the uh, Scantron driver's test, uh, but actually where the car itself can collect uh, real-time data uh, on your habits of driving, uh, start to get into your emotion of driving, uh, start to get into uh, a true form of assessment gauging your development as a driver over time. Um, that all has to be collected. Uh, so th there is no evaluation of those things currently. That doesn't exist. That's phase three. But phase one is setting up the infrastructure to actually collect human experience uh, in a uh, much more um, uh, sophisticated way than sort of the uh, traditional summative assessment that, um, that we get through schools, through instruction, uh, through driver's tests. Okay, but if I could just follow up on that, please. What sort of things would people, if you're sitting around having coffee, you know, in Baltimore, what do you, what are a couple of things you talk about, about how you're gonna go about doing this? What are you going to be looking at? What tools are you going to be using? Well, uh, that's we're all. Just, just real we're, quickly. We're building the tools. Okay. Um, so what we talk about is how do we build the tools? Um, builders first. Um, but I, I, I would say those three points uh, the, ab about data and learning and learning objects themselves, sort of separating out, um, I think is uh, so th that's sort of the fundamental piece, right? Is understanding that the way development works over uh, digital mm -hmm. is sort of naturally formative. And if you look at what's happened in sort of like, take education itself in like very large state-sponsored organization education, it's all been summative assessment, right? You have the standardized test at the end, right? But if we could actually, instead of doing that, track the entire formative development of each individual student mm -hmm. over time, and gauge them not against the standard, but against their own growth patterns, that starts to get into much more uh, interesting territory. Thank you. Hi, Julie Woods, class of 81. Um, I'm wondering are you, one of the things that happened with standardized testing was that it was very culturally based. So you wind up with inner city children who can't, you know, who have six figure businesses because they're doing the wrong thing and they're really sharp, but they can't pass an SAT test. And so what are you doing differently in 2014 that's going to be a much more inclusive uh, data base, a much more diversified database, yeah. um, so that we're actually getting human experience as opposed to, to be blunt, white male experience, sure. middle class to upper middle class white male experience. Yeah, I, I think that the most important thing there uh, is that, and, and frankly, as, as a company, we're taking a gamble on this, but um, looking at a, a future society uh, where um, data points themselves, data collection points are ubiquitous. Uh, and I, I, I think that that is actually a great equalizer in terms of current uh, inequalities that exist within education. 
uh, as well as um, the relative geographical limitations that are put on human beings. If instead of having to access, access was our pure experience of being alive, because data points themselves are ubiquitous into sort of the, the infrastructure, the architecture of our cities, of our highways, of our anything. Now that gets into obviously some scary, scary territory around privacy and whatnot. Uh, but I, I think that um, there are people who are working in that field where you have experience, privacy, and environment uh, that are all over the next uh, uh, 30 years really going to sort of blend together. Corollary to that. Yeah. Um, yes, and have you considered that there are populations, our elders, whose wisdoms are being lost, are uh, indigenous people whose wisdoms are being lost are um, are poor who do not have access to, who are only being watched from the outside, we do not have access to what they think, what they feel, what they learn, et cetera. Those are all analog yeah. data points. Are those being used or are those being lost? I would say that the reason that they have been lost is because of the structure of the education system as it currently exists, and we're trying to blow that up. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>